Hello everybody, this is Adam Kokesh here at Anarchapulco in Acapulco, and I'm here with Tim Moen, the leader of the Libertarian Party Canada. Now, to Americans, the leader, that's a, that sounds very unlibertarian. We're, we're, a, we're a leaderless resistance, are we not? But in Canada, this is a particular political term, and it's the equivalent of being I don't, I don't, the leader. Yeah, it's, uh, well, I like to go by supreme leader personally, but uh, yeah, it's technically leader. Every political party in Canada has a leader. Uh, the leader, if your party wins uh, and forms government, the leader becomes the prime minister. So we don't vote directly for the prime minister like you guys do in the States, vote directly for the president. We vote for the uh, party we want, the, the member of parliament we want, and then whoever uh, gets the most seats, the leader of that party becomes the prime minister basically so I'm kind of like the figurehead of the party I, I'm more uh, you know Nick Sarwark is the chairman of the of the USLP we also have a president uh, who would be more comparable to what Nick does who looks after the back end and keeps the organizational and keeps the party going and I'm basically the guy out in front of the camera and uh, and, and representing the face of the party I'm kind of like the Gary Johnson of the Libertarian Party except if Gary Johnson were uh, Murray Rothbard or Adam Kokesh or something like that. Or, or getting out and, and doing, well, you know, since you mentioned Gary in this context, I, I, gotta, I gotta point out that, you know, as much as I've, I've loved him and supported him in the past, uh, the one thing that rubbed me the wrong way was that he had the nomination in 12 and knew that he wanted it in 16 and didn't do much to build the party. Like you are, you know, just really getting out and, and making this something that, that's uh, much more inclusive and much more present and, and making uh, what, what has been a debate club in the past a political force that it needs to be. Now, one of the other speakers here, and I just, I, we're, we're going to cover this story just to get it out of the way for Tim's benefit here, but one of the other speakers at this conference is, a, is, is the statist here, Lauren Southern, who's arguing for government borders. And, you know, I've, I've debated her uh, on this before. And, and I still think that she has enough of a core principled orientation that we would want to include her, right? We would want her to be a part of the libertarian movement. But you had a bit of a conflict with her in Canada when she ran for office and had a conflict with the party. And then you guys had to have a settlement and, and she was suspended and there's some miscommunication. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, you're like, oh gosh, we gotta go tell this story again. Yeah, well, no, that's true. And it, and it was uh, it was more of a, a miscommunication really. You know, I was, I was being told certain things um, by people in my party, in my executive that were dealing with Lauren that might not have been 100% uh, true or might have been taken out of context a little bit and so based on the information that I was getting uh, that basically she wasn't being a team player that she didn't want to talk with us at all um, and and like as party leader I have to sign off on all candidates it's just a requirement and so I have to feel like okay this this person is representing our party and representing the message of liberty and I, I got to a point where I wasn't sure that was the case and I wanted to have a conversation with her and the information I was getting was that she didn't want to have a conversation back. So I, I suspended her uh, temporarily. I told my party executive clearly there's a way back for her here. She just has to have a conversation with her. We have to see where her head's at and see if she still wants to be part of the team. Um, and then, of course, all hell broke loose. Breitbart started smearing us. Uh, well, say, that's probably a good thing, right? I mean, if, if, if the Libertarian Party of Canada is relevant enough that, that conservative Breitbart sees you as a threat, hey! <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the, the long and short of it is that uh, eventually Lauren and I, even despite all the, all the forces trying to rip us apart, uh, there's, there's people on the left and right uh, that were that, you know, they're really locked in this left and right paradigm, and they were f squabbling over who should control the party and what the message should be and and this this suspension of Lauren was indication to people on the right that hey we're just being overrun by SJWs and leftists and then when I brought Lauren back because we we managed to have a conversation despite all the noise despite all the divisiveness we managed to come together meet our minds I realized that listen she wanted to work with us and she was being very reasonable and so I was like okay yeah no problem sorry I'm so, like I apologize like I made a mistake there. I learned a hard lesson about not verifying some some important information. Um, so Lauren get Robert, screenshots always. Get screenshots. Cite sources. Uh, see originals. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because. Well, hold on. I, I'm gonna. Yeah. I want to jump ahead to to because I know you don't want to belabor the story itself, and I don't think we need to. But I, I did want to bring it up, not just so my audience knows the the backstory on Lauren Southern and LP Canada and that that petty episode, but there are two. 
big issues that come out of this for me that I see is really important for changing the culture of the party and, and, and the movement as a whole. Well, the first thing is, we are cite your sources, get screenshots, don't make presumptions. Like we live in that world and, and we're really prone to being manipulated by people if we don't do that. And in this case, it was the executive director. We're not going to call him out or anything, but that your, your take on this is that he had an incentive to try to control what is the platform of the LP and say, well, no, only candidates that, that I like should be able to be on that platform and, and, and have that control of the brand. And that there was a willingness to, to be dishonest, that there was, there was an element of dishonesty and manipulation on his part. And, and if, if there had been more direct communication, more honest, open communication, none of this would have happened, correct? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think if I had just reached out to Lauren directly, uh, myself, I, I think we, it, it never would have come to that. So that was on me totally. And you know, I don't necessarily even blame our executive director or some of the people in the executive. Um, like everyone comes to the Libertarian Party and they have a particular agenda. They want to see a particular message and a particular focus. And you know, there are, the, the party is typically made up of, you know, Walter Block says this, it's made up of anarchists, uh, minarchists, constitutionalists, and classical liberals. And they're all under kind of one umbrella. And you know, typically the minarchists and the anarchists are fighting uh, in the party and that, that's where the Dallas Accord came from and said listen let's focus on what we can agree on and let's worry about the rest in the end like maybe we can get rid of the Republicans and the Democrats and just have an anarchist and a minarchist party uh, eventually down the road or something like that but we're not there yet let's let's fight that battle down the road because right now we have so much in common and so my my goal has been um, to, to, to provide unity for the party to provide um, to, to focus on the common ground that we all share, that we can all agree on, and, and recognize that it doesn't take much for, to, to cr sow seeds of divisiveness, right? And, and we see it right now, culture is tinder dry, like it, it's, it, it's so on edge. There's well, before you move on to the culture part, I really want to make sure that we cover this in terms of the relevance for, for libertarian movements and, and parties throughout the world. And if you don't know what COINTELPRO is, and, 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 I, and I hate to have to keep reminding people of this, but is it not critically essential that every activist in the world understands the concept of COINTELPRO? Yeah, absolutely. There are elements, there are people that want to undermine you as soon as you, you start being successful, especially a liberty party, right? I mean, there's so much incentive for people to maintain power and control and, and all the profits and plunder that come with that. Right. So, that so like in, in the LP in the United States, you know, we look at Gary Johnson's campaign and the Bill Weld money, and, and, and we look at Ron Nielsen and some of the other the, uh, corrupt forces that are like, ah, well, we're just here to pull, pull a little money out of the system, obviously, or to take advantage of, of the rubes. And it looks like, oh, it's, it's just a few million dollars at stake. It's not that big a deal. It's not a huge racket. But then you go, wait a second, neutering the LP is a part of a game in which trillions of dollars are at stake because if we were allowed to have a voice in the mainstream on the main stage the multi-trillion dollar the, the big racket would collapse i mean that's that make no mistake like that is what we're up against and it comes down to th these individual encounters you know tim's not like someone who's been groomed from birth to be a political powerhouse you know i mean He's well groomed and, and, and you know tall and handsome and great on camera and all that, but he's not he's not he's not from a political dynasty, right? I mean you're not you're not you're not he's not funded by Soros, and he comes into the saying, hey, I want to organize the party in a way that can be unifying, that can be inclusive, and of course we have the principle that we have to stand on, but even with that, we want we want to be as inclusive as Democrats and Republicans are, so that we can build the force that's going to challenge them, and it comes down to these little things. It comes down to these little decisions because if you were, if you were a COINTELPRO agent or if you're the guy in government going, all right, how do we neuter the LP? We don't have to, we don't have to assassinate people. We don't, we don't have to take them out. We don't even have to arrest people. We can just, we can just do bad jacketing. We can slander them within the organizations. We, we, can, we, can, we can have, you know, and, and I'm always suspicious. I think that the, the modern version of COINTELPRO is not going to be someone who you ever see overtly as an infiltrator, but someone who comes in and never really contributes anything significant, never really does anything meaningful, but is, but is always there, always, you know, volunteering for little stuff and, and causing just enough drama to cause a far greater negative effect than any positive effect of, of the work that they're doing. And they hide the drama and they, they're, they're proud of, well, I, I'm, I've got this title in the LP or I, I've done this or that. And, 
And I would, I just, from, from your experience, given that, what would your message be to, to people who are new to the movement, rank and file libertarian members, uh, libertarian party members, or people who are libertarians who are like considering getting involved with the party or any other activist group, given like, that, that you see this need to, to improve our culture, to make us less impervious to that manipulation? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's the key. I think, I think it's key for leaders in this movement and the party to, to ground themselves really deeply in the philosophy of liberty, to, to think clearly, right? Like emis, epistemic clarity is important. Being able to control anxiety and stress is important. Being able to, uh, having a willingness to take on responsibility, not avoid it. Um, and understanding that culture is trying to, that, that culture is feeding you lies, right? Um, those are, are keys to, to, not being able to be manipulated. And it, it doesn't take anyone as nefarious as COINTELPRO to corrupt the party, right? It can be some, something as innocuous and innocent as maybe a political consultant with libertarian leaning says, hey, here's an opportunity to really professionalize this ragtag group that has been on the fringes. I, right, it. I can mainstream this party and, and make a name for myself and then all the big guys will, will want me, right? Uh, or even, even, even more nefarious, but just as petty, staffer for Mitch McConnell. Hey, you're going undercover as an LP staffer. You're going to pretend like you're libertarian leaning now, and you're going to make it look like that, but really you're sent from the Republicans. And that the sad thing is that we are so vulnerable because we don't have people who stick with it. We have people who are willing to be... This, see, this is the thing that, that, that bothers me more than anything, that, that I want to see change in this, is that if, if, if you were COINTELPRO and you said, hey, I want to make the Libertarian Party of Canada impotent, I'm going to... I'm going to and, and again, nothing particular about your executive director, but you could, you could easily infiltrate and become the executive director and, uh, and, then, and then do something publicly visible that's, that's revolting to libertarian senses. And all the proud libertarians have to say, well, we're out of here. I can't be a part of this organization anymore. It's like, no, no, you're supposed to confront that guy and get rid of him, not, right. not do exactly what he wants you to do. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, you were right that I was never groomed to be a politician. I, I put wet stuff on red stuff. I'm a firefighter, paramedic by trade. And one of the keys to successfully putting out a fire and dealing with chaos is team loyalty and unity. Right? Now, you could have... Well, and you can't, you, can't, you can't say loyalty to libertarians without saying... This is something not not not, not to people, people, not blind loyalty, not, not blind loyalty. but loyalty to consistent principle and, and, and action based on that. And, and sometimes when you are uh, fighting a fire, your incident commander is a schmuck. He's an idiot. He doesn't know what to do. And he's making bad calls. And when you're in the middle of a firefight, is not the time to to break ranks, right? Afterwards, yes, you call out uh, the incident commander. You say, "Listen, we need to replace you. Uh, we need to get this straight so that our team isn't in danger anymore, so that we're more effective." Um, but you know, listen, libertarians have. Uh, a hesitancy to work in teams and in groups because it requires some co compromise and negotiation and it's very easy for us to, to key in on a divisive message right of like okay that guy's terrible I heard some bad rumors about him I heard he does this or this some screenshots out of context and that is the thing that I think libertarians really need to be on guard on whether it's from COINTELPRO or not it doesn't matter because it will divide the party it will create splits in the party and so you know, what we really need to do is focus on verifying the stories, talk to these people directly, and find out if there's any truth to them, and really focus on common ground. Um, you know, we, we are key wired, we're hardwired as libertarians to look at where people are wrong. We, we see the system, we see all the flaws, we look at, we, we have a fixation on problems, but we have a hard time switching gears when it comes to working together. And if I may about that, I, I, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say his name, um, but there's a, a prominent libertarian activist uh, who was a candidate in the last cycle for a major office, who's a, who's a good friend of mine, who said, well, you, we, I was proposing that, uh, some project that we could collaborate on. And he's like, well, well, we're both alphas. We can't really work together. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, cause we all, a part, a, an important part of the libertarian message itself is you are the alpha of your own life. You get to take charge. You get to be the master of your own destiny. And to me, a, a real alpha is, is not threatened by other alphas. Like for me, it's like, I don't, I don't have a problem saying everybody should be an alpha, challenge me, you know, be, be that, stake out your own space. But that, that, that a real alpha is a leader who can bring 
others together without compromising their alphaness. And, and that's, a, that's a huge challenge in the party to say, look, look, we as strong, independent individuals who want you to be strong, independent individuals are creating an environment where we're all welcome to come and work together and share a brand and share a platform and collaborate without threatening each other. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you, you want to surround yourself with people that are better than you, right? You want to elevate your game. Um, and, and, you know, th this is an important uh, part of being a libertarian. Like, quite often, we, we fixate on the freedom side of liberty, and what gets missed is the res personal responsibility side of liberty. You know, self-ownership implies that I own everything I do, the way I show up in the world, the, the vibes that come off of me, whether they're negative or positive. And... Uh, People forget about that. They're so fixated on people out that aren't them uh, and how they're behaving and how I'm being oppressed by how you're behaving and how you're ruining everything that I'm working for because of how you're behaving that they forget that, hey, you have some ownership here. And in fact, that's the only way we're gonna, we're gonna get anywhere is, if, is ex that extreme ownership. Like, I am an alpha, I, a I own my actions. Regardless of how some of the other people are behaving in this group, I can show up and be the change. I can be that the kind of person that brings unity, that uh, stifles dissent and, or, or division, and, and that focuses people on a common goal of positivity uh, rather than constantly getting drugged down into this quagmire and muck of negativity and, and slander. Luke Radowski is here, and I think he just turned on some giant machine, and that's probably our cue to wrap this up. But I just want to say thank you so much for your time, brother. Yeah. And, and, and I always have to point out for people who uh, are considering getting involved with the LP that there is a big danger of showing up to a Libertarian Party meeting. If you get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of it, you might come back and find out that you've been appointed to an officer position. <laughs> and, and, and sorry, you, you've just been voluntold yeah. though. But seriously, the LP is... is a truly an open platform it's 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 what you make of it the people who show up who who put in the time who bring people together are the ones who are going to maximize that platform the people who run away condemn themselves to having no say in it so tim thank you very much website anything else people you want people to know about how to find you or get involved with lp canada uh libertarian.ca and you can follow me on twitter at at moen underscore tim thank you brother Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube, and you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.